Hello, I'm Taj, digitally known as Tropic Vibes, the host of Nifty Business, where we highlight NFTs and explore Web 3.0 as we move from pure speculation to creating real world value. For the last year or so, Basie and Yuga Labs has really been the gold standard of NFT projects in Web3. So it is pretty crazy to say right now that Burn Basie is trending all over Twitter, social media, even on YouTube. And today we're going to dive into exactly why that is, why the most successful NFT project has found itself into this massive controversy and is headed towards a vicious legal battle. So as an independent content creator, I don't have to answer to sponsors or any kind of editors or anything of that nature. I don't have to worry about funding or anything of that nature. I just literally put out the content that I see fit. However, I have to say this is one of those stories that I really didn't necessarily want to put out. However, it is the biggest story that is probably going to be at the forefront of this NFT thing, even more so than crypto being down and everything going forward, because the biggest project, the largest lab, is in this massive controversy right now. When you first hear about this stuff, I'm going to say it is definitely triggering, so I want to give a fair warning that there's going to be some topics that might be a little awkward to even hear about, but definitely I will say that I'm not casting judgment either way. I'm just going to present the information and I will definitely give a little background about myself. I am a person that is very thick skinned. I grew up around multiple cultures and you just name it. I've seen it all. And personally, my background is I am a Jamaican born dual citizen. I grew up around multiple cultures all over the world. Where I lived, my neighborhood was in the border of the quote unquote good town and the bad town. So we're talking about going to school with doctors, kids, people that were primarily on the upper class. However, my neighborhood was divided right down the center. So literally backyards were cut in half and there was the urban side of town with the more minorities and all the different things. And of course, there was a big culture clash. There was things that were being said on both sides. And growing up in this environment, it really allowed me to have a very thick skin. So much so that even when I went to college and I was around all these different cultures and everything, you know, people are telling jokes, not really understanding each other. Okay, whatever. I'm not one who's just going to shy away from all this stuff. I embrace everyone. And even 2006 or 2007, about my sophomore year in college, I found myself sitting at a Thanksgiving table with the son of a former, I think they're called the Grand Wizards of the KKK in Virginia. And we're having a good time. He opened up his table to people that were of Jewish backgrounds. I think there was a gay guy. No, there's two gay guys sitting at the table and there was also multiple Jamaicans and all sorts of things and I'll never forget he says my daddy would roll over in his grave right now if he saw all of these people that I had at my table now he was saying that with an open heart just trying to be very genuine but again some of the jokes that was being said some of the things that he said were very (laughs) inappropriate to most people however I honestly saw that he was trying trying to bridge that gap and not follow the path that his father went down and so forth so again I said all of this just to lay the foundation to say that I'm not taking sides either way. I understand people are people. There's misconceptions and there's all sorts of different things on either side and certain things trigger other people. Now, when it comes to this whole Basie thing, for months I've been hearing that people are saying, well, these apes and everything, it is a racial stereotype because all throughout history, various quote unquote underdeveloped societies have been labeled as being apes. And that is not just in the States. This is all over the world and all these different things that people that are marginalized in certain ways, they have uh, been given ape names. So when I heard that Basie was caught up in some sort of racial thing, I was like, oh, here we go again because of the art, they're apes. And But this time it is very different. There is a lot going on. And now this has really fueled this huge thing. And As I said, I'm not picking either sides, and people even say that I'm doubtful, Thomas, because I Google everything, I deeply research, I don't listen to the narrative that's on the news or anything, and I've been hopping back and forth, hearing different stories from the people that are supporting Basie and the people that are on the other side of the fence, but all I can say is interesting nonetheless, and it's something to pay attention to going forward. So on one side, obviously, we have Yuga Labs, which is the creator of Basie, the Board Apes Yacht Club. But on the other side, there is a person by the name or that goes by the name of Ryder Rips. And there is a YouTube video out called the Bored Apes Nazi Club. Now, this all sounds very crazy. However, there is a one hour documentary, all sorts of crazy things, just really highlighting all of these different features and things that are hidden within the logo and all the art and everything the naming of their different projects, elements, and all of the details that goes into their puzzles because they do all sorts of puzzles that have 
anagrams and hidden words and ciphers and codes and all these different things so you could figure out the puzzle and win apes and you can have prizes and all sorts of things to unlock different levels within their community, which I wasn't even aware of. There is so much thought that goes into this thing. And a lot of this stuff sounds absolutely crazy, tinfoil hat, conspiracy theories. But once they highlight the background of the four founders, where they came from, from this website called 4chan, all sorts of things such as Pepe the Frog and a lot of these things that we see, these memes that go viral, that take over the world, they start on this thing called 4chan. It looks like a 90s message board and it's always in the news because there's always some sort of controversy about the worst part of society that ends up on the internet starts on 4chan and then things get out of hand and spiral out of control. Well, the founders were fully ingrained into that 4chan culture. And there's a lot of Anon. And even if you know the Anons and Anonymous, that group, the quote unquote anonymous group that was always on the news protesting different things and hacking into things and trying to release information and bring down the powers that are running things. They were actually born on 4chan because 4chan allows you to have anonymous profiles. And that's how the Anon and Anonymous as a group came to be. And they'll do things like white hat hack or malicious hack against certain organizations. But they're most famous for their memes and their internet cultures and having esoteric knowledge, meaning that they're on the inside and they call everyone off of 4chan the normies because they don't understand the inside jokes. So they put all of these codes and jokes and hidden things all over the place, knowing that only the 4chan people, the people that understand the culture will know what's going on. And the normies on the outside, such as myself, because I'm not someone who's heavily engaged in 4chan. Years ago, I went on the board and I was just surfing around and seeing what it is. And it really is a different world. Different conversations are going on there. There. And some of them are just absolutely just horrible. Some of the most grotesque things that really shouldn't even be. But I guess that, hey, that is me casting judgment, right? So what I'm trying to say is a lot of things come out of 4chan that are designed just to get a crazy reaction. And there's a lot of parallels and overlaps as to how their anagrams and their puzzles and all these different things and elements that goes into uh, Basie does look familiar and has a link to 4chan as far as the culture goes. Well, in protest and really going against everything that Basie has been doing, Ryder Rips has launched RR Basie, which is the Ryder Rips Basie, and they basically have stolen the art under the argument that the IP or the intellectual property was granted to Basie holders and therefore was open to everyone. And they created a collection that basically looks exactly like Basie and it has been taken down from OpenSea. They're trying to get it on other marketplaces. The royalties for the resale has actually been set at zero to prove that it's quote unquote not about money and is just about shedding the light of everything that Basie is doing, what they stand for. And of course, they have started that whole trending hashtag of burn Basie. So some crazy times are ahead of us right now. The definite fallout of this is the community is divided. The NFT community is split right down the middle. Of course, those that hold Basie and have uh, their net worth highly invested into this thing and dependent on the success of this project are for the most part on the side of Basie. They're supporting everything and they are fighting against his people. So a lot of people are warring and saying that this is all tinfoil hat conspiracies. None of this stuff lines up and everything is a reach. And then on the other side, they have uh, these people that are saying that these dozens of quote unquote coincidences could not just exist unless there's something behind it. And of course they have quotes from the different founders saying things that all the art is intentional, nothing is just randomized as far as just putting random things together. They selected every single piece of art for a very specific reason. All of the puzzles and anagrams and steps that they have done, everything was orchestrated for a reason because they are writers, they enjoy puzzles, telling a story, and nothing is really by chance. And so now they're willing to press a lawsuit on this whole Ryder Rips collection saying that is a violation of the property and this should not happen. It should be taken down, ceased and desist, and they're prepared to fight it. Then, on the other hand, they're also fighting the fact that all of this stuff about racial stereotypes and connections to Nazism is grossly mischaracterizing and misrepresenting the project, the founders, and everything that they stand for. So now a portion of this NFT community is calling for all of the athletes and celebrities that are rocking Basie to say, look, burn Basie, step away from this, because for the most part, the majority of them have been discovered to not even paid for their board apes. They were gotten them through some secret deal from 
moon pay and it's all part of a grand elaborate promotions to uh, make Basie go up and so forth and I'm not even going to go into all of that but basically they're accusing a lot of things of going on right now and because of that there is more conversation to go around about this topic than I can possibly tell so by chance, if you're scrolling through Twitter spaces and you're seeing all these rooms and you're not understanding why some people are upset at Basie, why people are defending Basie, and then why people are going against this Ryder Rips guy and all those controversies swirling around it, that is what all of this is about. So what is the fallout for all of this and how does this affect us as people that are not only collectors in the space, but we're looking for the future and building of it? For me personally, it is very scary. I don't really like all of this because I have no horses in the race as far as I don't own any Basie. I don't own any of these Rider Rips Basies or any of that. No mutant apes, no kennels, none of that nature. So for me, it's not about a financial thing. However, I enjoyed the success that Basie had simply because... They put so much attention on Web3, on NFTs, and all of this stuff, and they really expanded the horizon as to what an NFT project a community could do. So now that the community is torn over this, people want to really bring down this whole project. Deep down, it's like, man, if there really is something nefarious here and there is ill intent and all that stuff baked into it, well, then, yeah, that is not good. That should not be there. But a part of me is also worried that if the biggest project could fail that bad, How much detriment is it going to do to the space as a whole? And it really couldn't have come at a worse time. Crypto is down. All these NFT projects are down. People are very skeptical of NFTs right now. And now the golden standard is caught up in this controversy. And not to mention the community is thorn, split down the middle, and they're arguing over this. They're taking sides. There are people even getting threats via DM publicly. I mean, I've heard arguments on stage, just really heated debates, and it's pretty crazy times right now. And the worst part about it is there's so many things in this that the arguments are convoluted. There's, of course, the element of the celebrities getting paid and getting free NFTs to help to create the whole hype train. Then at the other hand, there is, of course, disenfranchised people feeling that the ape references are going towards them and somehow a slight towards them. And then the big elephant in the room is all the Nazi symbolisms and connections that are triggering a lot of people. I mean, I really don't like it. And to be honest, spending more time than what I have just spent on it is just not something that I'm willing to do on this show in particular. But the reason why I'm highlighting it is it's because it is by far the biggest story that is going down right now. And it could really shape the future of NFTs not only for collectors, but this whole business as a whole going forward. It could really shake up this whole industry. But just for reference, in case you're wondering what's going on, where is all this information coming, I'll put a link to the main website that Writer Rips put up called gordongarner.com. And of course, that is the pseudonym that is used by one of the Basie founders. And there's a whole theory as to why that was the name that he chose. And then also to the link of that YouTube video, The Bored Apes Nazi club and it is very long there's a lot of details and especially when it gets to the part about the puzzles that Basie built and all the clues that they put in the art to create these scavenger hunts or whatever you want to call it it's pretty mind-blowing some of this stuff is a reach however the sheer volume of things in there is definitely something to at least take notice to so with that said based on what you're seeing in your own research twitter spaces or your own personal sentiment, I would love to know what you think about this whole thing. What do you think is going to do for the NFT industry as a whole? And how does it affect you and how you view this space? Feel free to reach out to me at Tropic Vibes on Twitter. As usual, I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to this as we're learning and building Web3 together. So until next time, later. The Nifty Business Show is not investment advice. It provides insights and information within the space. As with anything, please do your own research before making a decision whether you're making an investment or a purchase.